And this is a joint work together with Andreas Halsing, uh, Mikhail Kodinov, and uh, Elon Yugev. Okay, so um, Sphinx Plus is an amazing uh, digital signature scheme. It is uh, post-quantum secure. It was chosen by NIST for uh, standardization, and it is arguably the most secure digital scheme available today. As long as your hash function is secure, then everything is great. Um, however, it is a bit larger and a bit slower than what we are currently used to, especially in the classical uh, schemes. Um, so for each security level, it has two different variants. One is the um, small variant, which is usually LF, uh, at the very least 7,800 bytes. And the uh, first variant, which is still a little bit slow, but uh, much faster than what we can have for the small signatures. And it actually, behind it, there is a very wide range of trade-offs that we can do uh, between the signature size, the signature uh, generation time, and the signature verification time. And the basic intuition is that if we want to have small signatures, we're going to pay, pay with computational cost. If we want to something that is very fast and efficient, we need it to be uh, larger. Okay. So, um, and it is based on a lot of cool Merkle trees and uh, one-time signature and few-time signatures and a lot of uh, cool primitives all joined together. We don't have time to go into the details, but uh, believe me, it's a cool scheme. You should read about it. Okay, so what we do here is we present Sphinx Plus C, or compressed version, and uh, we're going to use the exact same structure as the original variant. Uh, however, we're going to uh, tweak some of the primitives that are used, mainly Woods, which is a one-time signature, and Force, which is a few-time signature. And we're going to um, provide compressed, more efficient versions of them. And it actually requires very small minor code changes to the original uh, scheme. And it opens a new realm of much better um, trade-offs. And for example, um, if we want to have uh, the same signature um, generation time, but much smaller signature, we can uh, reduce up to 20% of the size of the signature. So for example, we have uh, from 700, uh, 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 7,800 bytes to about 6,300, which is still big, but much smaller than we could have before. Okay, so um, we're going to give some small intuition to how we actually uh, do it. And um, with pushing all of, putting all of the small details aside, um, Sphinx, like many other signature, is a hash and sign uh, sig a signature. So basically, we're going to take the message, we're going to prepend some random salt into it, hash it, and then we're going to get the resulting digest and sign uh, this digest. And basically, um, our sign algorithm can handle any input from the domain of the hash function, which is good because we can get anything in this domain, so we need to be able to support it. However, if we look inside this domain, we might be able to find some subdomains that for them we can optimize the scheme. We can actually compress it and make it much more efficient as long as we are willing to only support this uh, smaller subdomain. Um, so what we can actually do now is click, click again. Yes. Okay. So what we can actually do is uh, we're going to tweak the hash and sign algorithm uh, slightly, and we're going to add a counter. And what we're going to do is we're going to try different uh, values for this counter until our uh, digest falls inside this um, cool and optimized subdomain that we were able to find. And then we're going to sign it with our, an optimized scheme that was optimized for this specific subdomain. So what we have is we pay a little bit extra cost because now we, don't, we, we need to do this iterative counter um, search until we find the correct hash. Um, however, we can have an optimized scheme. And because um, the signer can just uh, put the counter as part of the signature, the verifier doesn't need to go into this entire process. All the verifier needs to do is to use the counter that it received, verify that the resulting signature is indeed in this um, subdomain, and then uh, verify the scheme. So in theory, we can have something that we pay a little bit computational cost, but have something that is more efficient. Okay. Um, but if you look at it and you know a little bit about crypto, you should have several um, red lights going on inside your head. And the main idea is because we are all told that um, uh, crypto primitives are supposed to be constant time. 
We should never do something that uh, is a uh, variable time. Okay, so is it um, secure? This is not constant time by definition because we have this probabilistic search for a suitable counter. So first of all, yes, this is secure. Uh, and now I will actually try to um, convince you why, why is it secure and it's okay. And the first thing is um, the question, yeah. Um, is it secure against side channels? This is not constant time. So um, the, the answer is yes. If the original Sphinx Plus is constant time, then our uh, solution is secure. And the reason is that uh, when we talk about constant time, the constant time is a very bad term that we use. This is not what we actually need. What we want to have for secure crypto is that, ooh, yeah, is that uh, constant time actually means that the running time might be not constant, but needs to be completely independent of any secret values. So, and here, when we do this iterative uh, counter uh, search, then uh, we only use as input the message and some public parameters. So the running time, although it's variable, it's completely independent of any secret keys or secret materials, and then it can't leak anything. So this is indeed uh, secure. Okay. Um, another issue is that we have a probabilistic algorithm with probabilistic running time. So maybe we might be very, very unlucky, and we'll have a, a specific message that will take ages to sign, and we're supposed to give services, we're, uh, we want to be efficient. So actually, we can um, bound the probability of the signature generation time taking more than some constant factor of the expected running time. And we can see that for all the parameter sets that we looked for, um, the probability that it will take um, nine times longer than what we expect is less than two to the minus 64. So the uh, distribution is very, very dense around the expected time. And we can actually optimize the parameters that we choose for the scheme in order to um, make it as efficient as possible. And we have, for example, one variant that will never take more than 1.2 times the expected running time. So it's variable, but it's still okay. And uh, of course, because nobody believes math anymore, we um, did some benchmarking to try to show it. And uh, what we can see is that even if we take constant time code as the original Sphinx scheme, Constant time code doesn't run in constant time because it runs on actual machines with operating systems and other types of noise. And we can see that the variance that is induced by running on a real uh, server is um, relatively similar to what we do when we have this uh, probabilistic running time. So basically, um, it is okay. So uh, now I will try to give you some intuition for how do we do this mag magic uh, compression thing and how do we optimize it. And for this, I will try to give some uh, details for um, the under underlying primitives. And we'll start by Woods, which is the one-time signature um, used inside the Sphinx. This is a, basically a very elaborate variant of the Lamport signature scheme. It is a hash-based uh, one-time signature. And here um, we have what we call hash chains. Basically, we have uh, several uh, secret keys, and we're going to iteratively um, calculate um, a hash chain over the original uh, value, and we're going to have a hash chain which is W um, with link W. And now um, we're going to take several of these chains and sign the message. And how do we do it? Um, in the signature generation, we're going to take the message, and we're going to split it into log W bits um, chunk. Then we're going to take all of those uh, values encoded into numbers, and we're going to calculate the sum of them, which is called the checksum. And then we're going to take also this checksum, and uh, we're going to split it also into log w uh, bits uh, parts, and now we're going to um, use our hash uh, chains in order to encode it. So basically we have several um, hash values in the number of um, words we have, and um, for each such, such chain, we're going to release the corresponding um, uh, item in the chain to the number. So we have for the first one, we take the number from the first uh, uh, chunk. So if it's four, we're going to iterate the secret key four times, and then we're going to release this hash value. And for the checksum, for example, this is seven, I think, then we're going to release this. And you're going to believe me that this is actually a very secure scheme, and it can be, it can be forged. 
And um, basically, the signature is just all of those hash values. So see if we want to, to send larger messages, we need to provide uh, more hash values, which make everything longer. And we also need to uh, sign the checksum. And the reason is because we don't do it, then thing can get, get broken. So um, the way that we compress things is we're going to throw away the checksum, which is nice. We don't need as much uh, hash values. Everything is smaller. Uh, but you can ask yourself, uh, uh, yourself, why is it secure? I just told you the checksum is very important. And the reason is that we're going to only agree to send messages with, uh, with a checksum of a specific value. We're not, not going to allow any other messages. Um, and so now we don't need to sign it. And the way that we do it is, as we told, with the iterative hashing, we're going to append some sort and we're going to um, digest uh, the value until we find something that with the corresponding checksum. The checksum is going to be the expected value. And um, basically, this is also very dense, um, so it's relatively easy to find it. And the nice thing is that uh, for verifying, this actually makes the scheme not only uh, signature smaller, but also uh, faster because the verifier does need to iterate over the hash chains of the checksum. But also for the signer, this is actually uh, faster because although it needs to do more work in order to find the correct counter or salt, it doesn't need to calculate the hash chains of the checksum, so it's also faster for him. Um, and we can do it, uh, we can also um, zero more chains. This is very nice. So basically, we reduce chains. We also have the force, which is uh, signature, basically a lot of Merkle trees. Uh, we're not going to details, but we do the same thing. We're going to just force uh, one of the uh, leaves that we find to be zero. And uh, again, everything is actually faster, we, uh, both for the verifier and for the signer. Okay, so um, for Sphinx, we can take the original uh, parameters that were proposed and we can compress them and we have something that is strictly better. It is smaller, it is faster, everything is great. Uh, but we can actually do better than that. We can use um, those better trade-offs in order to get much better results. And uh, this is what uh, we did. And actually we can look and all around um, various trade-offs, we can get better trade-off curves than what we could have done before. Uh, which is nice, and uh, we're actually looking for real-world requirements for what is the best use case and what, what the people really want to optimize on. Is it size, is it, is it speed? And um, for conclusion, uh, we propose an optimization um, the, uh, for Sphinx Plus. We have some interesting future work on suggestions that we have for optimization that are a bit more complex, so we didn't actually implement them, but they can make things even uh, better. And um, uh, we have both the uh, paper and the code available online. We have a Sage script if you want to look for optimize the parameter sets for your own use cases. And with that, I will be happy to take any questions. Thank you. All right, we have time for maybe a quick question. Hi, nice talk. Uh, so I'm curious to know how Sphinx Plus compares to the public key base signature schemes. I'm, so, I'm not sure that I understand the question. This. So uh, like how, do, how does it compare with the public key based uh, signature schemes? So you mentioned that this is a hash based signature. Uh, this is a this is a asymmetric public key scheme. It's based on symmetric primitives, but it is a asymmetric digital signature scheme. So you so what's the the pub, like what's the asymmetric assumption underlying the scheme? One way of, one way function with a bit more elaborate than that, but uh, we can take it offline. I can try to explain how the, uh, this happens. Uh, great talk. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so you mentioned at the beginning that some uh, that it's okay to take variable time to sign because messages aren't secret, but. Uh, there are scenarios, I think, where, where messages are secret. Like, I think secure scuttlebutt uh, is a protocol that, like, assumes messages are secret. Do you have any mitigations in those scenarios in mind? Um, if the entire message is secret, and then you can append some random randomness to this message, and then um, you can, it doesn't really leak anything about the original message as long as both the message and the randomness are secret. I think that we talk a little bit about it in the paper, but I'll also be happy to talk about it offline. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, is it quick? Yes, it's quick. Okay. Uh, since you, uh, you are uh, finding a small hash domain, will it be a high chance for hash collusions? Um, 
No, because the, um, the amount of... Um, okay, I think th this is a complex, way. it's a good, excellent question. It's a bit complex, so I'm not sure we have time, so we take it offline. The short answer is no, but the explanation is a bit, uh, <laughs> a bit complicated. All right, uh, thank you. Thank you.